Hello, and welcome to episode 8 of Modern Media Review. I'm Robin Gibson. And I'm Sean Golligley. And this week we're going to be talking about a subject I thought we'd never be talking about, which is a documentary, or even worse, two documentaries on Channel 5. Britain's favourite chocolate bar. Which you sound aired, a bit chesty there, mate. I am a wee bit, yeah. Britain's favourite chocolate bar, which uh, aired at Christmas, which we described as the nadir of Christmas television. And we weren't going to follow. And we followed up with another piece about Britain's favourite sweets, which came out a few days ago. What we're doing now is just following the traffic and... Uh... Well, we're following the traffic's better than getting run over by it, Sean. That is true, Robin. The fact is that on the website, the articles about these two documentaries got so much interest that you'd think we'd written an article about Meghan Markle's new diet plan or something. If only. The, di- the difficult thing for me about this was that um, Channel 5 for me is a little bit like um, Daily Express, Daily Mail. Everyone loves a list. Mm. You know, if, if you say top 10 of anything. Tea bags. Whatever. Bus, bus stops. What, what, what is your favourite tea bag? Carburetor fluid. <laughs> I wouldn't go as far as carburetor fluid. But what's your favourite tea bag? Tetley. For me, it's the pyramid. Yeah, okay. well, but, they'll probably do one Channel Five. But yeah, they, well, for the future, we should probably pitch that. Actually, yeah, this is a little bit different for them because it was popular but nice. Yeah, yeah, not a not a not a word you associate with Channel Five. Nice. Normally, the stuff on Channel Five is um, benefit scroungers. Okay, not great, but apparently people like watching it. Sharks. Everyone likes <laughs> to see sharks biting people. Uh, oh, Nazis. Sorry, dude, sharks, did, sharks have got every right to bite people. Well, I hate it when they say that phrase shark infested water. It's the humans that are infesting the water. The sharks live there. And there was also, a great one the other day that I noticed on the BBC website that said whales interrupt surfing competition. I think you'll find that was surfers. surfing competition interrupting whales. Fair enough. And you're so right on, mate. Not only do we get Nazis normally on Channel 5. You seem to watch a lot more Channel 5 than me, mate. Are you just... I just dipped into it for the chocolate bars. Are you virtue signalling? Whereas you're watching all these Nazi documentaries and shark... Yeah, because I love them. But my favourite <laughs> is um, Nazi repossessions. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That. I, I've read about Nazi repossessions. Yeah, which Channel 5 will give you all the info on they if you want. They certainly put the bailiffs to shame, don't they? And I've got to say, if they did top 10 Nazi repossessions... I'd be bang up for that because number one has got to be some poor soul being chucked out of their house and hanging themselves live on TV. So what you're saying is this is the nice side of Channel 5, yeah? The nice side is chocolate. The bad side is repossessions. Yeah, but the chocolate is the thing that we uh, we wanted to major on. Yeah, and we will major on it. We'll minor on repossessions. But for a programme that's seemingly so banal, hosted by... No, not hosted by, but featuring Joe Swash. Joe Swash Janet is Janet everything. Ellis, Vanessa Phelps, Angela Griffin, Dom Jolly. It was remarkably controversial. The chocolate bars one at Christmas had several turnips in it, which were, <laughs> weren't chocolate bars. For example, at number 13, I think, was Thornton's. That's just a shop. Absolutely. It's certainly not a chocolate bar. Yeah. And then further up the chart... And also, Robin, when was the last time you went to a Thornton's? Well, to... you can't in Paisley because it's shut down, like well, the rest of the high street. Well, we've got nothing around my way. No. And then further up the list came Twix, which I would put it to you that a Twix is a biscuit, not a chocolate bar. I, and I would rebut by saying that it's definitely sweet and chocolate. Okay, well, maybe it, maybe it just about qualifies as a chocolate bar, unlike number five in chocolate bars, which was Ferrero Rocher, which they are sweets. They're not bars. Someone on Twitter said, love a Ferrero Rocher, but it's not even a chocolate bar, is it? Absolute liberty, and I've got to say I agreed with her. However, it is chocolate, Robin. You it's have not to, a bar. I, I think you have to give a little bit here, mate. Well, they were given a yeah. lot. Maybe you should have a documentary in Channel 5 about Channel 5's greatest um, mix-ups between chocolate bars, sweets and shops. And also, it doesn't really matter for these guys because the whole shtick to it is a top 20, which everyone loves. Any old and it doesn't 20. matter, just chuck it in. Get these tired old celebs. We're going to talk about this later. But these poor souls... Looked like they'd been in there for about... I mean, I'm sure post-Brexit this is not going to happen, but um, it seemed like a um, humanitarian disaster. They were still wearing the same clothes they talking were. about these things years <laughs> later. Well, you know only I mean? a, it was only a week later, but yeah, it did. I did notice during Britain's favourite sweets, 
that Dom Jolly, Joe Swash, Hal Cruttenden, brackets comedian, they just tell you that to make sure you know, Angela Griffin, Jenny Powell, who's in, actually on more things on TV than Joe Swash, were all wearing the same clothes. And they all seemed a bit tired the second time. I always think that it, it must be a great credit to you if you are brackets comedian. Yeah, if you have to have it in brackets after your name. I think it's nice. Still, it made things clearer for me. Well, I think it's nice. Yeah. Uh, I would like to be known as brackets alive. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing to aspire to, isn't it? The actual denouement of the chocolate bars was a bit boring because Dairy Milk won it. Which... The most boring chocolate in the world. However, if you're going down to your local sweet shop, Dairy Milk is readily available in most shops. Yes. Fry's Chocolate Cream, which is a particular favourite of mine. I used to love that, yeah. I love it, because you feel a bit posh, don't you? Well, I always felt posh when I was eating... Well, that wasn't even in it. Well, which was a travesty. Mm. Dom Jolly did make a good point about um, a dairy milk. He said it's Britain in a bar. Which that I, was that was brilliant. It's probably the single most interesting thing that was in either documentary. Yeah, without which doubt. Which is set in a very low bar, but there, chocolate bar, but there you are. For the sweets one, they kind of changed the people around a bit, although not their clothes. They binned off Sue Pollard and they got in Phil Tufnell and Trevor and Simon and that woman who cleans your house, Kim Woodburn, <laughs> and some other annoying people um, <laughs> yeah. trying to make out that it was a new show. But um, it wasn't really. It was the same show, except it was about sweets. The thing about the sweets one was that it started to make you think about the demographic because the the top 20, right, certainly the, the bottom half of it was full of old sweets you get in jars. Yeah, well, I'm going to take issue with Rhubarb you Rhubarb and custard, licorice sticks, blackjacks. Who buys these anymore? Well, I'm going to take issue with this because I think that these were sort of like red herrings that were just thrown in. Well, Joe Swash said... <laughs> Joe Swash said, this might throw us, and he got totally thrown, because then he said, this is an older person's sweet, like my mum. Which, bad grammar, I mean... His yeah, it doesn't scan, does it? His mum's not an older person's sweet, but I knew what he meant. And it made me wonder where, where they were polling these people. Maybe they were doing it at Joe Swash's mum's house. Because all these old sweets, who, who are the... If you stop someone in the high street and say, what's your favourite sweet? They ain't going to say Sherbet Lemon, they're going to say Smarties or something like that, aren't they? Maltesers? Yeah, neither of them were in it. Again, there's a demographic thing in here because when Jelly... And Jelly Beans, another generic old-fashioned sweet comes up and Dom Jolly gives this... But this is a nonsense, He gives this anecdote about Reagan and Gorbachev, like we're back in the 80s. No, this is a nonsense because all these generic sweets that got mentioned, it doesn't count because no kid these days goes into a sweet shop. Well, I don't think there even are sweet shops anymore, are there? Well, you just said your local sweet shop earlier on, so you must have one. I meant my news agent. Okay. Mind you, do we even get news agents anymore? No, not with newspapers in them. No, no, no. I can get, yeah, also, Beer. And not cheap either. No. No, so not good. You can't buy these quarter pound of bourbons anymore. Bourbons? Yeah, well... You mean bonbons? We, sorry, bonbons, <laughs> uh, which came in at number 20, I believe. Uh, I don't think they were number 20, but the numbers don't really matter. What? There's a there's a kind of reflection, the demographic on the street, the demographic in the studio, the fact that everyone who was on the programme when Starburst came up, they all went, whoa, these should be Opal Fruits, really. Well, Joe Schwash. It's Brexit. Joe Schwash wouldn't have been born when it was Opal Fruit. So why is he commenting about Opal Fruit? It's a bit like those old shows where you had people who were about 19 telling you how they loved space hoppers from the 1970s, isn't it? when they obviously weren't old enough to remember them. Exactly. I think they give them notes. A good thing in the, the Sweets documentary was um, their product placement of swizzles. They make no, I've never heard of swizzles. They make refreshers and parma violets and love hearts and all that, and they went to the factory. It's incredible, right? These things are like huge 10-foot pink turds of parma violets. see you <laughs> sliding through the factory. Quite, I'd never thought of it like that. They must be making a hell of a lot of parma violets, mate. You know, because this thing was about 10 foot long. But you know, Robin, that parma violets and refreshers are not vegetarian friendly. I do know that, actually. Do you? They've got gelatin in them. How? Lots, lots of sweets do. How is that working? They get gelatin in them, like jelly, like table jelly. It makes yeah, but them, they're, they're not sort of like... It's to make them... But they're not jelly. It's to make them... They don't have to be like jelly. It's to make them sort of... Well, a refresher and a... Palma- chewy. It's to make them chewy. That's what it is. It makes things chewy. Refreshers and palmer violets are not chewy, mate. Okay, well, you don't... I don't know if it's in palmer violets. I don't eat any of these things anyway, <laughs> so it's completely irrelevant to me. But if someone offers me a sweetie, I usually look at it to see if there's gelatin in it. Well, how do you do that, then? I'll look at the label. 
What, if someone offers you a suite, you say, hold on a minute, <laughs> yes. I need to look at the fucking E-numbers That's right. or whatever, yeah? yeah? yeah. Really? Not E-numbers, E-numbers don't matter. To well, you don't do that, do you? Do you just say yes or no? I always go and look and say, is there gelatin in it? Yeah, yeah I don't believe yeah. you. To, okay, some more modern ones came in, and Haribo Star, Star Mix won number one. So it wasn't all old-fashioned, but they still had all that stuff like bonbons and licorice, all sorts, and wine gums and fudge. What What's fudge? It was very, fudge it was very strange because I was annoyed that Haribo won it. Why? Um, it's very European, isn't it? Exactly. German. I, German, didn't, I, I didn't vote Brexit so Haribo could be number one. But they our... make them in Pontefract, mate. German, mate. Yeah, but it's German and Pontefract. Okay, well, it's very inclusive. Probably going to be about a thousand people laid off from Haribo factory but in Pontefract. It did make me wonder who they were asking because in the program they well, showed were you asked. No, but I wasn't on the street where... And if you were asked, what would you have gone for? Smarties. I'd have gone for Frutella. Yeah. Well, I think Frutella should have been in it. The point is, who did they ask? They showed you them with an iPad out in the street polling people. What I wonder is, was it just a random small sample of people in the high street, or was it a proper YouGov-style, independently monitored poll with thousands of respondents? Who knows? And what age are they? Who knows? I've, I noticed the other day in Pointless, right, that... I always think, you know, that they must be asking a hundred quite old people because you get high scores for... Like, the other day, a high score came up for Only the Lonely by Roy Orbison. And Osman has obviously had this put to him because he butted in and said, you know, people often say to us, you must just be asking a load of old people in these questions. No. And he said, that is not true. Okay. He said, it's simply that big names score high. So that answered a question for me. The point is... Was this sample representative of the generation? Well, the I fact that Haribo won it suggests that it probably was in the end. Well, I think probably they interviewed ten people and they got someone saying bonbons. Now, bonbons. When was the last time you went into your local sweet shop, which you keep doesn't, that doesn't local. which doesn't exist? Yeah, which doesn't exist, like and a, said, "I'll have a quarter pound of bonbons." It's like an imaginary sweet shop of the past. The, this things tap. These list things are tapping into nostalgia. They it's all about nostalgia. Done, and now, Robin, I don't mind nostalgia about um, chocolates, biscuits, or sweets. They did biscuits last year. That's where all this started. Chocolate digestive, wasn't it? We seem to love nostalgia and talking about things like this. And it's almost like opium for the people, really, because while we're talking about and worrying about our favourite chocolate biscuits and sweets and all the rest of it, there's quite a lot of stuff going on outside as well. I know, but lists have taken over, haven't they? I mean, there's like five reasons why your shoes wear out and stuff like that. Newspapers have all this kind of thing. I mean, Channel 5 have taken over this from the BBC because they used to do it with I Love the 1970s and I, so on and so forth. I, I think it's, you know, not not going too deep into this, but um, I, I think it's very resonant of the way that we are now is that we don't connect with anything within more than five seconds. Do you know what I mean? I know, it's all quick fire stuff, isn't it? it it's a bit disappointing. Now, if you said to somebody now, do you want to read a book that's a thousand pages long, would you read it? No, they'd just read the title and the cover and that would be enough. Yeah, exactly. Or or maybe, you know, the book Fighting a Cheetah on the Serengeti. Eh? You know, <laughs> what beast comes out on top? Or, yeah, do you know I what see mean? what you mean. I don't think a book Fighting a Cheetah is going to be very interesting TV, to be honest. I guess the book would lose. Anyway, I had to look back. <laughs> the book would definitely lose. But what? The, che- the cheetah might the lose. Power of, the power of the pen would lose. I think the cheetah might lose interest and just walk away. <laughs> Okay. The, um, I did look back at the BBC's I Love the 1970s just to see, because I always thought it was things like Space Hoppers and Scooby-Doo. And in fact, choppers. Very choppers. much is. Choppers and did Scooby-Doo. Did you have a chopper? No, 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 I didn't, no. I did notice that the first episode of I Love the 70s was hosted by Jimmy Savile. Ouch. Yeah, yeah, that's difficult. I don't think we'll be seeing that on repeat. No, I don't. Or well, catch up. cut the beginning yeah, of it, I suppose. Yeah, just cut that out, yeah. And then in 1974 episode, the hosts were rhubarb and custard, which is Love. a bit like Basil Brush turning up on that. Um, yeah, Britain's well, favourite sweets. Yeah, I felt wrong, bad about that. The wrong voice. Yeah, the wrong voice and fake Basil Brush. Fake Basil, because apparently the real Basil guy has died. Dead. Yeah, he's dead. Man. Which, when you think about how long Basil's been going, isn't that surprising, is it? No. The thing about this obsession with nostalgia is it's like the opposite of disruption, which is the buzzword at the moment. You know, like people at like Elon Musk, who we've discussed before with their electric cars and space yep. rockets. Although, 
There's nothing innovative with a space rocket, is there? Well, I mean, I think haven't we been doing that since H.G. Wells? Anyway, disruption is really just innovation, but annoying. So people are forced into change. These things kind of counteract it. They let people, instead of being disrupted, which is unpleasant usually, it lets them sub- lets them get submerged in the past, really. <laughs> okay. And there's nothing that wrong with it. It's just that the shows aren't very good, are they? So we've got to the bottom of this um, top 20 of our favourite sweets, and we've missed my favourite, uh, which never even got a mention. Not even a mention, Robin. What was it? Well, you could get eight for a penny. I don't know. I've got no idea. Well, it wasn't blackjacks. It wasn't fruit salads. Mm. White mice. Yeah, you can still get all that stuff. You can't buy Pick white... It. No, I reckon you can still get them in those shops with the different little boxes. OK, mate, if you can show me, I'll buy them. Anyway, I believe you've got a theory about this, Sean, which is quite intellectual and probably something that um, the makers of the programme at Channel 5 weren't thinking about when they put together Britain's favourite sweets and chocolate bars. Well, in all honesty, it's about as intellectual as changing your socks. I just think what we're doing with this whole thing is hankering after a world that in our mind's eye existed but never actually did. Do you know what I mean? Well, you might say that, but blackjacks exist. <laughs> well, blackjacks do exist, but not in the same way. And no one buys them. Anymore. No. Which is a bit like Brexit, because no one's going to buy that deal. No one's buying that either, are not they? A, not at eight a penny. No. And on that note, I think we could probably wrap up Britain's chocolate bars in their original wrappers <laughs> and um, and say goodnight. But not before we say, have a look at the website, modernmediareview.com, where... Apart from our work, you can read the work of Misty White, who wrote about... Um, I think chocolate. that's Misty just um, texting us. Yes, who wrote about Britain's favourite chocolate bars and Britain's favourite sweets. And, and also, we can see the talent of Mr Rowan Talent. Rowan Talent's cartoons, caricatures. Well... I think they're more caricatures than cartoons. And also, please listen to the podcast on YouTube and subscribe if you like them. And they're also available on iTunes and Spotify. And also, subscribe even if you don't like them. Yeah, do that too. We're on Facebook as well, for those who are interested in that sort of thing. And we'll be back next week. We'll be talking about icons of BBC's Apollo. So Games. looking forward to that. And, so uh, looking forward to that. Bandersnatch, which I haven't even watched, but I don't think that matters. Does that matter for you review things, that you have to watch them? Just get a flavour of it. <laughs> and that's it for this week. So good night. God rest. And good night. Bye.